Here we're going to look at a nice and quick geometry problem. So we want to suppose that we've got a square with side length 1, and next to that square we have an equilateral triangle, again with side length 1. Then next we inscribe a circle within this square and a circle within this triangle. And what we want to do is calculate the distance from the center of the circle that is inscribed in the square to the center of the circle that is inscribed inside of the triangle. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So what we're going to need for both of these is to find the radius of each of the circles. So this radius of the circle inside the square, that's not too hard to see. So notice that we can just drop a line vertically from the center of this circle down to this side right here and it's gonna bisect this side length. So now the fact that it bisects this side down here means that we have a length of one half and that's gonna be between this intersection point right here and then this corner of the square. But then by symmetry, that also means that this length right here would be one half if we were to make a horizontal line across. But then we've just created a subsquare in here that all has length one half. But that subsquare, one of its sides is a radii of the circle. So that means this circle has radius one half. So that was uh, super easy, barely an inconvenience. Now we're ready to find the radius of the circle, which is inscribed inside of our equilateral triangle. So I'm going to start by um, making a line segment from the center of this circle down to this intersection point right here. And then I'll also extend this line segment up to the top vertex of the triangle as such. Great. And maybe the first thing that we want to do is calculate this distance right here. And actually, this isn't too bad because we know this angle right here. So that's a right angle. And then we know this angle right here. So that has measure 60 degrees, again, because it's an equilateral triangle, which is pi over three radians. But now we can use some trigonometry. In fact, we can use the cosine function. So we know that cosine of pi over three is going to be equal to whatever this length here is, which I'll just put by a box over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is the side length of this equilateral triangle, which is just equal to one. But then on the other hand, we know that cosine of pi over three is half. So that tells us that this uh, length right here is one half. In other words, this pink line segment bisects our um, side length of our equilateral triangle. So we've got a side length of a half or a half side length over here as well. Okay, so that's actually good news because we can use that to calculate this uh, radius of our circle. We can do that in the following way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line segment from here to here, and then by a symmetric argument to what we've just done, we can see that this is gonna be, si this is gonna be length half and this is gonna be length half which tells us that we have broken our equilateral triangle into two similar triangles by the side, side, side theorem. So notice it's gonna be this triangle right here and this triangle right here. So they share this pink side length and then all the other measurements are the same. So we've got side, side, side equivalents there. But what that tells us is that these this angle is actually being bisected. So that means we know half of this angle is pi over six. Now maybe we'll name this radius r, and we can use, again, some trigonometry to calculate r. So notice in this case, we're gonna use the tangent function. So we know that the tangent of pi over six is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that tells us that tangent pi over six, in this case, is going to be opposite, which is r, over adjacent, which is half, in other words, it's gonna be equal to two r. Great. But then on the other hand, tangent of pi over six is a well-known value. That's gonna be one over the square root of three. So that tells us that our radius will be equal to one over two times the square root of three. So that's good news. We've got the radius of the circle that is inscribed in our equilateral triangle. And now we're actually in good shape to finish this problem off.
So what I'll do now is create a triangle. Well, it's gonna be a right triangle whose hypotenuse is this goal value X. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's gonna look something like this. So I'll make a line parallel to these the side of our square and our triangle, but it is going to go from the center of this circle. Good. And then we can easily measure the two lengths of the sides of this right triangle. So notice that this length right here is gonna be one half plus one half, so this length is one. And then this length right here isn't too bad to calculate either. It's gonna be one half that's gonna be this entire distance here, minus r, that's because this is just the transposed radius of this inscribed circle over here. So one half minus r. But we know what r is. r is gonna be one over two times the square root of three, so this is one half minus one over two root three. But now finding a common denominator, we pretty easily see that that's gonna be root three minus one over two root three. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a right triangle, side length one and this object, and hypotenuse x. So that means we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate our x. So let's see what we have here. We have x equals the square root of the sum of the squares of these two things. So it's gonna be one squared plus and then we'll have root three minus one over two root three quantity squared. So we have something like that. So now let's go ahead and calculate this. So that's gonna give us the square root of one plus. So notice our denominator here is pretty easy to write down. We have two squared, which is four times root three squared, which is three. So that's gonna be four times three, which is 12. And then our numerator, we can just FOIL that out. So maybe we'll do that over here. So we've got root three minus one times root three minus one. So that's gonna give us root three times root three, that's just three, negative one times negative one, so that's plus one. And then notice we're gonna have minus two root three from the cross terms. So that's what we get from this side calculation of squaring out that term. Good, so let's maybe go ahead and write that over here. That's gonna be four minus two times the square root of three. Now we can start putting things together. We'll go ahead and write this one as 12 over 12. And then that's gonna leave us with 12 plus four, which is 16. So we've got 16 minus, so it'll be minus two root three all over 12. Then we can simplify this a little bit, maybe by dividing out a two in the numerator and the denominator here. So let's see, if we divide out a two in the numerator and the denominator, that's gonna give us eight minus root three all over six. So that's the value of X that we were looking for. And that's a good place to stop.